Today we're talking about a topic that most people whisper about, miscarriages. As an OBGYN, I'm gonna tell you really what you need to know about this issue physically and also emotionally. A miscarriage refers to a failure or end of a pregnancy uh, in any trimester. So typically, we consider a third trimester miscarriage as a stillbirth and a miscarriage occurring in the first and second trimester, you know, that is the lay terminology. We don't know exactly how common miscarriages are, but in OBGYN, we typically tell women that if they're pregnant enough times, most women can or will suffer a miscarriage, a lot of times even before they even know that they're pregnant. Rates are quoted that hover around 20%, 25%, sometimes even higher. There are a lot of factors that go into determining a woman's risk for having a miscarriage, but in general, an isolated, singular miscarriage is incredibly common. Age can always be a factor. We used to think that the majority of age responsibility fell on the woman, but now we know that there are effects on the paternal chromosomes as the man ages as well that may or may not increase the risk of pregnancy loss, but in general, we have to remember that uh, age is one very important factor when you talk about fertility. Sometimes a miscarriage will produce no symptoms. Sometimes they're called spontaneous abortions. Sometimes they're called incomplete abortions, meaning their heartbeat stops in utero, but the pregnancy stays in the uterus and then needs to be evacuated surgically or sometimes medically by a healthcare professional. Sometimes we refer to a threatened miscarriage as a threatened abortion, which means there might be bleeding, but there's still a heartbeat. And we don't totally understand what causes it, but we do know that sometimes women will have no symptoms at all. Other times there can be spotting, there can be heavy bleeding, there can be cramping. I think the first thing for women, if they're told that they've had a miscarriage, is to take a minute and really kind of process that as much as possible uh, from an emotional or psychological standpoint. There's rarely a time pressure to act or do anything unless the woman is bleeding excessively or hemorrhaging with a miscarriage, which can occasionally happen. Otherwise, all other scenarios, there is time to think, breathe, process the information initially as best as possible, and then make your decision about how you wanna proceed. If we're talking about a first trimester miscarriage, Basically, the options given to women are to do nothing and wait for it to pass on its own, or to undergo surgical evacuation, which is called a suction DNC, or dilation and curatage. Uh, usually we don't give medication in the first trimester to evacuate the pregnancy. A surgical termination or surgical procedure known as a suction DNC is much more controlled. It's scheduled, the woman is under light sedation so doesn't feel any pain, it takes literally minutes, and then there's very minimal cramping and bleeding afterwards. But it's an individual choice and um, every woman has to decide with her physician which one is right for her. Stillbirth is really not a medical term, it's a lay public term for usually a third trimester fetal demise. In terms of how common a third trimester loss or stillbirth or intrauterine fetal demise is, the cited statistic is 1%. There are thought to be over 20,000 stillbirths in the country every year. Those numbers may be a little bit in question, but what's not in question is that stillbirths can and do happen. Sometimes there are known risk factors, sometimes they happen with no known explanation or risk at all. That is individual, case by case. There are rarely any medical reasons for a woman to wait. Sometimes there may be, um, but the vast majority of women are told when they're emotionally and physically ready, uh, that will differ woman to woman, but there usually is no reason why a woman can't try to conceive um, after getting maybe one period after a miscarriage. Sometimes it happens on its own, literally the following month. I think for women who have suffered a miscarriage who 
on some level blame themselves or feel like it makes them less of a woman or that it's a fault or flaw in them. Um, all I can say as an OBGYN is that's not true. It's not your fault. Uh, it doesn't make you flawed. Um, and it certainly doesn't make you less of a woman. I think that we need to start kind of expanding our sensitivity when it comes to this. And a big part of that is the, how we look at pregnancy in this country, which is that, you know, it's just always the Hollywood pregnancy and um, it's so easy and then couples get this perfect baby and that's not reality. And for the people who suffer miscarriage, uh, it seems that everywhere they turn, they're looking at that Hollywood pregnancy or they're seeing women who have seemingly no issue with fertility. Um, but I think it's important to remember that optics are rarely reality.